Hi pre-meds. In this video, we're going to be talking about section three, the bio biochem section of the new AMC exam that was released last week. Um, this bio biochem section, I will say was a little trickier, a um, little more nuanced, a little more difficult um, than some of the earlier AMC exams, particularly one and two, but I felt like it was representative compared to exams three, four, and especially the section bank questions. So I would definitely make sure to prioritize doing the AMC section bank in BioBioChem as you prepare for this exam. So what did I notice? Um, there were definitely a couple of funky tables and tricky graphs, um, definitely p-values, confidence intervals, and understanding what that means for statistically significant data was a highlight of this exam, of this section. They definitely wanted you to know what data was valid in terms of statistical significance and what data was not valid or not different enough to make a conclusion about. So there are a lot of questions that required you to know how to read data and read significance in a more complicated table or figure. So definitely brush up on that. Um, four of the passages had tables and another four had bar graphs. So again, pretty decent number. Um, but again, there were a couple passages. I think there were about three passages that had no visual elements at all. It was just text. Um, and they were really compare contrast passages. So they would show two different diseases, for example, or two different models. And the questions would ask you about the comparison between those two topics. So it actually kind of felt more carsy, um, those passages. And then it would switch to a very graph data heavy passage that definitely felt experimental and was testing you in that way. So it was an interesting combo of very, very, very heavy critical reasoning in a passage, and then also heavy for data analysis from those test taking skills. Um, so it was interesting um, and it definitely kept my attention because there was like a little bit different passage every time. Um, definitely if you have a strength, if you have a strength in data or a strength in reading text-based passages or text-heavy passages, maybe think about reordering the passages to do your strength first um, because it was a little jarring to go back and forth and switch headspaces. So something we talk a lot about in my courses is kind of how to reorganize the sections to make it more effective for you as an individual test taker. And I definitely noticed that I needed that in bio, bio in particular. Big players from a content perspective, enzymes, um, they were double dipping a lot between chem phys topics of like enzyme kinetics and then the biochem topics of enzyme mechanisms and how they work. Um, so definitely, definitely feel comfortable with that 1A proteins and enzymes. Obviously amino acids continue to be a player in this section of the exam as well. And there were a lot of questions about transporters. So transporters, channels, things that get in and out of cells, lipid membrane stuff. So making sure that you're comfortable with the different type of transporters, like symporters, antiporters, co-transporters, and what they do. Um, and examples of each, I think would be a great thing to study. Um, the last thing that I thought was interesting in the biochem side of things is there were definitely detailed metabolism questions. A lot of students ask, Amanda, do I need to memorize all of the metabolic pathways? And based on this exam, my short answer is yes. The focus was definitely on the aerobic respiration. So glycolysis, citric acid cycle, and electron transport chain. I would definitely book some time and just memorize that all the way out. Memorize the enzymes, memorize the substrates, memorize which steps involve NADH and ATP and understand the nuances of the electron transport chain, even down to like the flavins and the different kind of cofactors involved. So those were, those were there and those were tested. So unfortunately, yes is the answer to memorize, um, but there weren't a lot of details about the less tested metabolic pathways like glycogenolysis or glycogenesis or uh, beta oxidation. There, I didn't see any questions on that. There were definitely questions on aerobic respiration. So yes, put it in the study block. Um, when I work with students, I usually suggest learning metabolism, structures, enzymes, and cofactors and steps towards the end of the prep so that you're not memorizing something in month one and then having to rememorize it again in month four. So I would kind of save that for later, but make sure you have good study materials with which to review metabolism. Um, 
Finally, uh, other things in the biology world, uh, there were definitely some mutation genetics concepts. That's always a big player, um, heavy hitter. I think there were solid 12 to 15 questions between the two genetics categories, 1B and 1C. So yes, we need to be comfortable with genetics. There were definitely more reasoning-based questions there, so understanding how mutations can affect outcomes of diseases and things like that. So definitely do a lot of active practice in genetics in terms of practicing with passage-based materials and with research and design. Um, there was more of an emphasis on microbio as some of my students reported, not as much on viruses as I was expecting, but definitely types of bacteria, um, how different bacteria work in terms of good bacteria in the gut versus pathogenic bacteria, um, and a couple questions that required knowledge of viruses versus bacteria versus eukaryotes. So making sure your cell bio is done effectively with a lot of compare contrast with the different types of cells uh, will help you there. In terms of systems bio, um, there were definitely a decent amount of questions on the endocrine system, including detailed based questions, like not just generalized hormones, but exactly which cells produce those hormones. So, you know, definitely put some work into learning the endocrine system and types of hormones and where they're produced and what their action is. Um, again, the pathway is less tested, a lot more kind of memorization in this section. And then finally, there were a couple more than usual immune cell questions, um, blood cell questions, and less about the overall cardiovascular system, renal system, and musculoskeletal system than in other exams. So each exam kind of picks and chooses which system to test. So I would definitely make sure to focus on cellular structures since that sem seemed to be the focus of this exam. Even in systems, they wanted you to know about different types of cells, how neural cells versus immune cells work and erythrocytes versus um, hepatocytes. So kind of keeping the cellular focus, um, I think will help with a lot of the questions on biobiochem. Finally, as always, there are a couple questions in gen chem and orgo structures, and particularly for gen chem, uh, for orgo. So, like I mentioned in the chem phys analysis, definitely focus on knowing your biomolecular structures. All right, gotta know them. And then um, in gen chem, decent amount of overlap with a very very basic concept of endergonic and exergonic reactions, and what KEQ means for an overall reactions and activation energy. So all things that we are expecting to see there, nothing new from that side of the biobiochem section. Overall, I would say I would actually rank this as the hardest of the four from just a basic how much work goes into learning this material. I felt like chem phys was a little bit more like core concepts. And once you understood the concepts, there was less memorization, whereas the biobiochem material that I saw in this exam did require some solid memorization in metabolism and cell biology. So maybe spend some more time with the memorization side of biobiochem and more time with conceptual understanding of chem -phys topics. All right, I hope that was helpful and I'll see you for our analysis of the psych-soch section. So happy studying.